Okay, so far, Mexico City just touched down one of the most electric cities that I've seen so far. Man, yes, I've been trying to street food, but I want to know where else we got to go. Literally, when they take it as it comes, you got all the noise. Don't worry about that. We about to vibe out. Come ride with the boy. Mexico City is easily one of the most underrated cities in the entire world. People have been telling me, yo, you're sleeping on this city. And I don't know why it took me so long to visit. And so what you're gonna do is roll around with me and the entire crew through Mexico City. It's easily one of those places that I could come once a year. The culinary experiences, you've got sports, um, you've got amazing people, you've got these crazy museums. If you like the shop, um, activities galore. Literally everything that you want in a big city, they have it within Mexico City. And I told you, the culture is almost like second to none. So with all that said, there's only one thing that I was worried about when coming to Mexico City, and that was safety. Um, I've heard just so many things, right? Narcos, all these different things. And so I was a little apprehensive before coming. That was literally my only worry. And then when I got here, I was like, man, this is a really well organized city. I felt completely safe the enti entire time I was there. And I would say just like any city though, be aware of your surroundings because if you do wander off into the wrong place, you might have some issues. But the thing is, is like if you're in New York, you know the kind of places to go and it's the same thing in Mexico City. And what makes this video so special and why was I even in Mexico City in the first place? Um, we had our first ever brand deal and that was with Airbnb. So Airbnb launched this new amazing um, cooking experience. And so we went down to Mexico City to film that. And I want you just to understand this. I've done hundreds of Airbnb experiences before they even reached out. I've stayed in hundreds of homes before they reached out. And so this is like something that's still authentic to me. I'm gonna be talking about Airbnb experiences quite a bit in this video, but this is what I do literally when I go to every city. So for me, as long as it's authentic, I'm gonna share it with y'all um, along the way. One of the most important things when you're visiting any city is like, where you gonna stay? And so for me, you know I like fly spots. And so um, I stayed in this amazing neighborhood of Juarez. Um, and we had a four bedroom Airbnb. It was, actually, it's more like a three bedroom Airbnb with a maid's quarters um, in a beautiful neighborhood. So much happening. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Brooklyn. And you have just restaurants everywhere. You've got just the energy of the city, everything that you want. And then this place, you might be wondering how much it costs. Literally $95 a night. And I was like, yo, that works for my bank account. And the way my bank account set up is check. The card is going through when we do this. And it's not an official passport heavy video until your boy get his hair cut, right? You know the boy gotta stay fresh. And so um, when we were walking around in the neighborhood about three minutes away from the crib, um, I saw this place called the Barber Spa and I was like, ooh, this place looks like my kind of spot. And then so I roll in, um, talk to this cool dude, um, Eduardo, who's my barber. Um, you know, start talking to him in Spanish. You know, my Spanish is not that bad. And then just the, you know, the energy is more of an experience place. They call it the barber spa for a reason. I mean, you've got the drinks, you've got people literally giving you massages, you know, on your hands, on your shoulders. You just feel so relaxed. I'm like, yo. This is how you get your hair cut. So if you go see him, tell him your boy Passport Heavy sent you. I'm sure he'll hook you up with, um, you know, a drink or two. So I stayed in Mexico literally for like three weeks. I was supposed to stay for one, ended up staying for three. You know how the boy rolls. And so um, this, the last two weeks, we stayed in this area called Palanco. So if you can basically picture like Beverly Hills of Mexico City, like this place just like it reeks of luxury like you just walk around smells like money out there and so you have like the most ridiculous stores anything that you want you've got the nice cars driving around you know people walk around oh my god you know just that kind of vibe but then let's talk about the apartment so i had um this apartment in a high-rise building 
It was phenomenal. Like real four bedrooms. Um, I think we're on like the 30th floor, just a crazy view over Mexico City. And um, the place has like, you know, doorman, uh, gym, a real hot tub, sauna, every type of amenity that you can imagine. And then um, for this Airbnb, um, I was paying $200 a night. No hype. When I talk about there's no shortage of activities to do in Mexico City, I am not hyping it. So one of my dreams is always to drive a Ferrari. I've been in love with them since I've been a little kid, but I think so many of us, because it's not within our reach or we don't think it's possible, it's like, oh, I don't care about that stuff. But deep down, we all know, I mean, we want to ride a Ferrari. And one of the craziest things I learned is the number one, um, women do this more than actually men in Mexico City, but they had this experience on um, Airbnb where you can literally have a Ferrari and drive around the city. And um, yeah, I let loose. I felt like a little kid. Like, I'm not too cool to admit like I literally felt like a little kid driving around Mexico City. I felt like a superstar. People were like, oh my God, hey, how you doing? I was like, yeah, it's running, bro. I got to give it back in 15 minutes. But while I was in it, it felt amazing. And so highly recommend it. And like the owners are super cool, super approachable. I mean, just don't scratch their Ferrari. And you know, they'll remain cool. One of the things um, I really loved about Mexico is the culture. Like they are so true to their culture and it was just such a beautiful thing um, to experience. Because in America, we only get like a little bit of their culture, right? And then so being um, in Mexico City with Mexicans, um, you know, super friendly. But one thing I do when I travel pretty much to any country, I reach out to people on social media. I'm like, hey, I'm coming to your city. I would love for, you know, people to show me around. And so while I was in Mexico City, um, this guy named Bo, he's actually from Illinois. He moved to Mexico City. And uh, so he's a big black guy, just like myself. And this guy speaks fluent Spanish. And he actually ended up on the biggest TV show in Mexico. He's like, yo, bro, yo, I'd love to show you around. And when you say like celebrity, I mean celebrity. I couldn't walk more than two minutes without someone coming up like, oh my God, selfie, selfie, selfie. And then like, I mean, everyone just loves him. But what I did is um, I met him at one of his favorite um, taco spots and he explained to us um, a little bit about the food. So if you, if you go to Mexico, you have to get a taco the pastor. It's like, you know, the hamburger, you know, the Big Mac, the pizza of, of Mexico. So, but you need you need to have your lemons, okay? Your or your your lime, we call it limones, aquí. And then you have to have your little like guacamole salsa, okay? You get that, put a little salt in it, and it's perfecto, okay? That's good. That's good. I tell you, everywhere, every person I take here, they always say this is the best gringa they ever tasted in Mexico here in uh, Calico. And then, so after the food, uh, we just went walking around, you know, just exploring. It's one of my favorite things actually to do in Mexico. It's a very walkable city. And then you're just seeing some of the most beautiful museums um, and just like architecture that I've ever seen in my life. And then, so after walking around, Bo was like, yo, I got my homie coming to pick us up. I was like, huh? Yeah, man. Like, he pulls up in the limo, like, big, um, I think it was like an Escalade limo. And I was like, this how we gonna roll around the city? He's like, yeah. So then we're in the limo, just having a good time, um, you know, exploring the whole city. And then we're just making a few stops to go see different, um, you know, monuments around the city. And it was just such an amazing feeling. Like everyone is just so friendly. Even rolled up on this one kid, we're pulling up and he just jumped out the car and started dancing. Oh, get it, hey, hey, hey. hey. So one thing I have not talked about yet enough is the food. The food is incredible in Mexico City. And like I said, the cost of living here is really good. It's one of those places that I can easily post up for six months. They've got good internet service, friendly people, great transportation, all the things that I look for when I'm being a digital nomad and spending time in cities. And street food is a big thing in Mexico City. When I say big, I mean huge, massive, right? And there's one spot that we go by, I think it was like 30 pesos for like five tacos. That's about a dollar fifty or so, dollar forty, dollar fifty if my conversions are right, for five tacos. And then so like literally for three dollars, and we did this a few nights, we spent like literally three bucks on dinner. Like that's it. And that's the kind of vibe and people love their street food. Like you can't go to Mexico and not really walk around 
and try their street food. It's some of the best street food I've ever had in my entire life. So now while I'm talking about food, right? Like I said, the reason we're down in Mexico um, in the first place was because of Airbnb um, cooking experiences. And so I met this amazing woman named Claudia and her entire beautiful family. And what was unique um, about this is it's not, um, it's like indigenous um, tradition to Mexico because there's so many, Mexico is huge. They have so many different cultures. Just like in America, we have a lot of cultures even um, in Mexico they have a lot of different cultures and then so when we went to her house um, we just felt so welcome you know she has like this blessing welcoming thing that she does um, and then we just got to meet her family shout out to her son Sebastian um, Sarah um, grandma it was just such a beautiful experience and then the thing I love about um, the Airbnb experiences is that you get to have experiences that you can't normally cultivate on your own. Literally invited us into our home um, to cook a meal, learn about her history, her culture, and how to make these foods. And I was like, wow, this is one of the greatest things. I'd love to do this with like my friends that are coming into town or, um, you know, family. Like if I had a family and kids, I'm like, hey, yo, kids, this is how you learn about culture. Versus in a book, this is just a beautiful way to learn. We just really connected. And so I was like, hey, um, my friends from the NBA were in town. Uh, and they actually, and they invited me to go to the game. Claudia's like, I really vibe with your spirit. Um, absolutely. So Sebastian and Sarah, um, you know, came to an NBA game. We went to the Dallas Mavericks game um, versus the Detroit Pistons. And shout out to, um, you know, the Pistons. You know, Shot Town, there grows poo. Um, we see you. And it was just a beautiful experience, you know, to take them to the game and then for them to see something like this. And they're like, whoa, this is like, that's a cool thing. And I think I got more joy out of seeing them happy um, than anything. And literally, we still keep in touch to this day. Like, literally, like this is, like they, um, like this is just yesterday. But um, like I said, yeah, the cooking experience, you'll see the link down below. I highly recommend it. And then they also have online experiences um, that you can do. Activities galore in Mexico City. I'm sure you've heard of Nacho Libre, like the Mexican wrestling. This is a big part of their culture and it's one of the most fun things I've ever done. Anthony, um, one of our filmmakers, probably had too much fun. He was like a big ass kid. Ooh, you know what we're gonna do? I was like, yo, calm your ass down, bro. So, <laughs> but like, um, and before that, um, what we did is we went and um, made masks. We literally made masks, um, painted, and then shout out to my homie Rashid and um, his little boy. So he came along on the experience. And it was just fun learning about the culture and how it all started. But we weren't allowed to film inside of the arena because um, we didn't have like filming, um, filming rights. But it was like, I can't recommend it enough. Just a really amazing thing. And like, if you want to get really in the Mexican culture, it's something I, I highly recommend. And then, so you might be wondering about transportation. Uber all day. Um, Uber's super cheap there. It's probably like one third of the price that it is here in the United States. And you can do anything from the regular Ubers to like Uber Black. And they got the freshest ass cars out there as well. If you want the boy to enjoy, you just need to give me a few things. Sunshine, beautiful people, a boat, drinks, and good energy. With that, I'm not asking for too much. And one of my favorite experiences that I did is they have these beautiful, colorful boats um, that have been a part of tradition for such a long time. And they literally have just a punter that um, propels you through the water and you go through the river um, or canal, whatever you, you, know, you wanna call it. And then you literally have drinks on here. You have people from all different cultures in the beginning. Everyone's kind of timid. And then as the drinks start flowing, you just like, you've got happy people with dancing. You have all the stops along and it's just beautiful as well. Um, we literally hired, um, I don't know if you call it a mariachi band. Um, the guys came on the boat, um, literally it's like 20 bucks or something. And just it added to the environment and the energy so much. And then you learned like all about the history. I won't spoil too much of it, but I'm telling you, it was one of like, if people ask me, if there's a top five things to do in Mexico City, this is easily within my top five things to do. And then, you know, I'm gonna talk about food again. And so, chortos, right, are such a big thing. People love sugar. If you wanna get out of shape and, you know, get a belly, eat a bunch of these things. Your man is officially a chef now. Just made churros, probably enough for the whole city of Mexico. 
um, enough sugar as well for the whole city of Mexico. Um, but it was an amazing experience because I got to learn really the process because when I'm in the store, I'm going to buy them, you really don't know how they're made. And it's interesting to learn you know, how something's made from scratch and the history. And one of the most interesting things is, do you know where these things originated? Probably not. But it's China. You learn something new today. There's few things in my life that I'll get up at 4 a.m. for, but to witness something like this, I would do it time and time again. What am I talking about? Hot air ballooning in Mexico. When you talk about an experience that you're gonna remember for the rest of your life, this was one of those moments. Make sure you get there on time, or you're gonna miss the sunrise, right? And then shout out to the company that we went with. Um, this wasn't an Airbnb experience, it was this cool English dude. And um, they were like rated one of the best companies there. So out of here in Mexico, just had one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Literally flew over pyramids. So, how long you been here in Mexico? Oh, a good while. A good, like 26 of those years. So 26 years, and then how long ago did you start this company? And we've had this company since, pretty much since I got here. Wow. And I've been doing it before that. So 40 years flying hot air balloons, and then here, this amazing pilot. Amazing so, pilot. Right? I've flown, <laughs> I've flown a few times before, but this man literally landed in a trailer. I'm like, basically, what the fuck? Who lands <laughs> in a trailer? Local. <laughs> and so, you know, we did the hot air balloon, amazing experience. And then um, close to, and when you're up there, right, you've got all the, you're, you're like flying over the pyramids and just this epic landscape. And then so after that, I was like, yo, we actually need to go see the pyramids. And because we had a driver, then we're able, after the hot air balloons, you know, to spend time there um, around the pyramids. And it's just like, you can feel the history and like the pride of the people um, around there. And then you do have like these dudes always trying to sell you stuff, but they cool. And I was like, oh, prices weren't actually that bad. And um, I bought a few things and, you know, support the local economy. And then, yeah, we just kind of toured around um, and enjoyed, um, you know, the day out there. One of my favorite things to do in Mexico City is just literally walk around. Um, I've said this in Walkable City a couple times. And um, one of the cool things we did is, is a walking tour. We did this amazing walking tour and we learned more about, you know, the street food. And even literally one of the things that I learned is they have a government regulated price on tortillas. People can't jack the prices up because it's so much a part of the culture. And I was like, oh, I love it, I fucking love it. Literally regula regulating the prices of tortillas, fam. So Mexico City has so many different options when it comes to food. Now this was one of the best fine dining experiences, actually the best fine dining experience that we had the complete time that we were in Mexico City. And one of the coolest things is that the chef was around while we were there and he came over. One of the, the cool questions is, I, asked, I just asked him about the different neighborhoods and what they meant to him. What would you say are the four best neighborhoods for like tourists or someone that like you know has a little bit of money like coming to visit? Yeah, yes. First one could be Roma. It's yeah. just then it's just across the street literally. So much stuff, so much galleries, so much uh, it's not like super expensive, but yeah. you have a really nice time and the neighborhood is really has a lot of really nice details, like a bunch of old buildings and Really classic restaurants. Uh, the second one would be Polanco. It's more of a really expensive neighborhood, but it's worth it. Like it's it's always like this contrast, and it's worth seeing. Like you know, it's all about the luxury. Yeah. The third one would be Condesa, just because it's it was part of the upbringing of Mexican restaurants and etc. So I think that there's a bunch of really nice things to do there. And the fourth one will be Juarez, definitely. I'm in love with my neighborhood. We are actually catching up. This neighborhood was left alone for a long time, and right now it's picking up again with really good new restaurants, new boutiques, new galleries. So one quick little hack um, for you is if you find a driver that you like and you want to do long distances, 
negotiate with them, especially so for us, when we went to go do the hot air balloon and then we went to go see the pyramids, we, let, we literally cut the price in half. And our driver was the coolest. And if you want his info, it's right here. And then also um, I'll link it in the description. So when you think of Mexico, you're obviously either thinking about tequila and then also mezcal. And so Airbnb, they really get you inside the culture when you come to Mexico. And then also learning the distinctions between mezcal and tequila and then all the different grades. Whew, smells like cactus. And so it's just one of those enjoyable things if you appreciate the detail for things and really knowing the meaning and the history. I think it's one of the coolest things that you can do in Mexico City. And also get to try some really good drinks um, with a cool group of people. So I never heard a woman say, I'm so glad my man can't salsa dance. <laughs> and so when you come to Mexico, it's easily one of the best things that you can do. And Airbnb had this amazing experience with amazing salsa instructors. And then Anthony was so excited because he felt like he had two left feet. And the instructor just made him feel so comfortable. Um, at the end of it, he was just like, I can't wait to do this again and experience this all around the world. So in closing, um, Mexico City is definitely gonna see me again. I had an absolute amazing time. Uh, the people, like I said, were so friendly and, and so cultured. I love it when people are so proud of their culture. Um, you know, it just means so much to me and to see them in their native lands. Um, it was just a beautiful thing to experience. And then shout out to, you know, my entire team. Um, Mike, you know, produced this episode. Big shout out to him. Um, Nathan, um, Nate Wild, just an amazing filmmaker, beautiful work. Um, so a lot of the shots that you're gonna see are from him. And then a big shout out um, to Anthony, Mr. Two Scoops. Um, he put, he shot this, um, shot this entire video as well, but he's also edited this entire video. And he is literally one of the best filmmakers in the world. I love him to death. And he recently just launched um, a filmmaking. So one of the things about filmmaking, right, is a lot of people go to school. So right now I'm actually filming this video in, um, in California. I'm in Malibu um, currently. Maybe I'll show you a view of um, you know, what I'm looking at here on the other side. But uh, like USC Film School, like to go there is literally $77,000 for board, room and tuition for one year, fam, one year. And a lot of people that come out of there after four years, um, they go on set and like they're getting coffee for like a few years, working their way up. And like there's this new thing of online space and creating, um, people wanna know how do you shoot a passport heavy video, right? Or how do you get into it? Or how do you shoot, you know, clients and have five figure jobs? Anthony has actually literally dropped um, his film school. And I'm giving a big plug because I love this guy and he knows what he's talking about. And so um, I'll put a link below. He literally has a film school and the value is incredible. It's about 500 bucks um, you know, to join his film school. But he also has like a free class if you want to do and just check out his work. Um, I think there's a, um, also put a link um, to his free class. You know the quality of his work. I mean, you see it here. If you've been watching Passport Heavy or following, um, you know, I just salute him. And then shout out to um, Isaiah McNeil, our composing genius, um, you know, for scoring this. We always have original scores, and so I appreciate you, Isaiah. And um, shout out to Airbnb. Like I said, like they didn't pay me for this video, but thank you for being a brand that like I really mess with, and I appreciate you, and I proudly talk about you, and I've been talking about you for free for years, and so um, I just wanna say thank you for giving me the opportunity not to shoot, and oh yeah, go check out the video that we did with them um, on the channel. I'm actually, I've re-recorded this video, um, and right now we're going through this thing, you know, RIP George Floyd, um, literally recording this through one of the heaviest times in our nation, and it's a time to come together, but it's like a time where people actually need to see what has actually happened. Like, I haven't even talked about a lot of the racist experiences that I've had in my life happen to me. Um, even like some things that have happened while traveling, but most of them have actually happened in the United States, right? And so I just wanted to take a moment to kind of, you know, reflect on that. And I don't want to... I want to end on a high note, um, and one of the beautiful things is I went marching um, yesterday here in LA, and it was crazy to see so many different races coming together for justice. And it was like, 
all different races came together because they saw injustice. And it was just a beautiful moment because normally, you know, it's just black people out here fighting for what we know has been wrong for so long. And now the fact that other people are actually standing up and marching alongside with us, um, it was just a beautiful thing. And um, so I was like, man, I had to, you know, come and re-record um, this video because we, you know, we didn't release it. Um, I don't want to make this a longer video than it is, but I appreciate you um, and take care.